believe we have reason to ask you a series of questions. What reason? We're not at liberty to say. Please have a seat. You came to... Welcome, viewers. My name is Elizabeth Zott, and this is Supper at Six. The return of Paris's Gentleman Thief, a period drama about science and cooking, and a McCarthy-era gay romance thriller. It's a varied October in the world of TV series, and our critic, Deepthi Kalar, is here to take us through it all. Hello, thanks Hi. for being here. Now, you're starting with the highly anticipated new season of Lupin on Netflix. Yeah, the very popular French TV series starring Omar Sy is back for a third season. He was already a star in France before this series, but Lupin really propelled him to international stardom as uh, Assan Diop, as a sort of slick, gentleman burglar uh, with a tormented past and a fascination for uh, Maurice Leblanc's Arsène Lupin books. So at the end of season two, Diop disappears. Season three picks up uh, a year later from there where he's come back to Paris in secret to carry out one last heist, a 19th century black pearl. The idea being to whisk his family away to a life of luxury afterwards. As you can guess, it doesn't quite go to plan E. Okay, well, Paris is a gorgeous backdrop for the show. Take a look at what the cast had to say about shooting season three of Lupin. Évidemment, on continue à tourner dans Paris. Il y a toujours des endroits super. Paris est aussi un personnage très important. On a voulu s'amuser un petit peu plus en, en termes d'action. On s'est fait un peu plaisir sur sur les cascades, en sautant du toit, un peu plus, un peu de fight, de trucs de poursuite. Cette partie 3 est beaucoup plus dangereuse. C'est complètement fou ce qui se passe, quoi. Surprise, euh, nouveauté. Ouais. On passe vraiment au-dessus, quoi. C'est ouais. un niveau au-dessus de ce que vous avez vu avant. Puis Omar, quoi. Le beau sourire de Marcy. So, you know, Eve fans have definitely given their thumbs up for the series. This, the show, this, is, this season has been wildly successful. It's risen to number one in uh, 44 countries in, on Netflix in 44 countries, including France, but also Mexico and Argentina. So how does um, the show fare after three seasons? Well, look, it, it does not disappoint. It's definitely a departure from the previous seasons. This season, this series is, uh, this season rather, is very, it's, a, it's darker, it's more violent. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, it's really just really fun. It's watchable. It's it's an excellent character-driven uh, show. It keeps you uh, hooked with lots of bends and twists. And uh, without giving away too much, you can expect a jaw-dropping uh, twist in the final episode of season three. Now, Lupin works mostly because of Omasi's uh, fabulous acting, his natural charisma that just really translates onto, this, onto the screen. It leaves you also constantly cheering for him as he evades authorities and carries out these incredible heists. Um, and you know what? He does that notably through um, a, a series of sometimes ridiculous disguises in the season. But even that sort of comes with biting social commentary because, uh, you know, the idea that authorities see black men as interchangeable, that a cheap wig will suffice just to change his identity. So it's a very interesting uh, look at that as well. Okay, we're looking forward to that. I'm excited about the next one, though, because <laughs> um, I've just finished the book. It's back to the 1950s for Apple TV Plus with a period drama called Lessons in Chemistry, um, starring Marvel actress Brie Larson. Yeah, Lessons in Chemistry is a, uh, a slow-burning, pardon the pun, uh, drama about lab tech, Elizabeth Zott, who, who dreams of excelling in her scientific field but comes up against uh, the dogmatic patriarchy of that era. So what happens is she gets fired from her job. She takes a job as a TV cooking show host for Housewives, and here uh, she uses her platform to teach women about uh, science. Take a look. Do I need a catchphrase? Don't overthink it. Never understood what that meant. I stand proudly with the overlooked workhorse of the kitchen, women, and baked potatoes. What the? Just like you cried at the time of your life. You've got something almost no one has. Breaking through the hours. The platform. What you say matters. Politics don't belong in the kitchen. A man wants his wife to make him a drink after a long day at work. Why do you assume that his day was longer than hers? Why don't you make the drink? 
So Eve, the show is uh, based on uh, the hit debut book uh, by Bonnie Garmus, which actually only just came out last year and became a New York Times bestseller. Like the book, the TV show also looks at, as you saw there, uh, the submissive role of women at the time, but also uh, has themes of racial prejudice and uh, sexual assault in academia. The book is very moving, um, but the show has gotten some mixed reviews. What are your thoughts? Look, it's really easy to watch. It's, it is very moving, uh, for me at least. Uh, there's a great aesthetic as well, you know, very carefully curated 1950s costumes, music, set designs. Uh, it all seems very deliberate and thought out. The show rides on the incredible, for lack of a better word, chemistry between Brie Larson's uh, char character and uh, the character played by Louis Pullman. They're both very idiosyncratic characters and their epic romance is very special because it's one of equals. Um, uh, FYI, Lewis Pullman is actually the son of Bill Pullman, uh, the actor, and he really steals the show as Calvin Evans, this sort of handsome, antisocial, but brilliant scientist who falls for Elizabeth. There's also a very interesting reimagining of one of uh, the book's characters, Harriet, who's a, um, a black civil rights activist who's really given a, 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 an important platform in this uh, in this show. Look, nothing, not everything is perfect. There's one episode that's actually narrated by a dog which I still don't oh, understand. Oh yes, because the dog's got a really big part in the book. <laughs> okay, well, they, uh, it, well it, 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 if you don't know the book it feels a little bit jarring um, <laughs> but and it's also a little bit maddening um, about at how the series tries to make these leads perfect and never really gives them time to be flawed which is something I like personally in, in a TV show, flawed, flawed characters. Okay, well, I can't wait. Um, Netflix has released a new Reggaeton comedy, Neon, um, executive produced by Daddy Yankee. Yeah, it's a Neon is an eight-episode Spanglish series. It's just dropped on uh, Netflix. It follows three best friends, Santi, Ness, and Felix, who moved to Miami in the hopes of making uh, Santi's dream of becoming a reggaeton star uh, come true. The show actually features a cameo by the OG of reggaeton, uh, Daddy Yankee, who's, as you said, is also given an executive producer credit. Um, also features cameos from Puerto Rican stars like Joel, from Joel Irandi and Jayco. Um, expect a lot of laughs, highs and lows as this trio uh, try to win over uh, Miami's music scene. Okay, well, let's um, take a look at Neon out on Netflix. I'm a manager for a new reggaeton artist, Santi. And I'm Santi's creative director. We're going to show the people that we're not just a loser wannabe. Yes, the three of us currently live in the 2009 Toyota Cool. <laughs> We're meeting with someone from the biggest label in the game. Oh. <laughs> okay. The music industry is tough. I have to see you guys out there performing. So what did you think of it? Look, it's definitely not groundbreaking, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, uh, the aspiring music star is a well-hammered TV trope, uh, well-hammered out TV trope, but it is heartfelt, it's entertaining, and sometimes it's all you want to show to. It's just to sort of distract you for a couple of hours. Uh, you will inevitably find yourself rooting for these characters uh, and respecting their hustle. Um, you know, it's hard to break into the music industry. Uh, uh, and in fact, uh, the music, uh, the song that the lead character sort of made his career on um, is has has Net Netflix have given them a video clip. So should we take a look at that video clip? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the, 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 in the show, Santi becomes a viral internet star because of this song, Exajero, and that's the whole reason why he moves to Miami. Um, this song was produced by hitmaker Tiny, who actually made all the music for the show. Um, you know, look, personally, it feels like Tyler Dean Flores, who plays Santi, is lip syncing most of the time, and I, I felt like that was a shame. It would have been nice to have a, a, an actual reggaeton star playing the role or have some a, sing a singer play the role. On a positive note, I do appreciate the efforts to showcase the less glittery side of Miami. For instance, when these three friends arrive in Miami, the apartment they move into is very unglamorous and, um, uh, you know, it's a reality for many Miamians and I think that was a really good move to keep that authenticity. And kudos for one of the major uh, storylines which offers up really insightful commentary about whitewashing in the reggaeton industry. There's a very interesting review from this website that you see there, Refinery29. It's well worth checking out after you watch the show because the, the analysis is actually quite interesting. Okay, well, it sounds like a good series if you're looking 
uh, for something light and airy. Let's head back in time now for our final series. Fellow Travellers is a gay romance set in the political circles of 1950s Washington. That's right. Fellow Travellers out on Showtime this month. It's based on the 2007 book by Thomas Mallon. It features... Two openly gay actors, British actor Jonathan Bailey of Bridgerton fame and Matt Bomer from the hit show White Collar. Uh, the impossibly handsome uh, actors uh, chronicle this forbidden secret romance between their characters who are two Washington political staffers uh, who first meet during the Lavender Scare in the 1950s. The Lavender Scare was uh, when Joseph McCarthy and Roy Cohn uh, led, led a campaign of political repression in the 1950s. They targeted homosexuals and anyone suspected of being communists in the U.S. Uh, the romance um, spans decades and it takes us through the 1950s and then the Vietnam War and then the disco era and then the AIDS crisis. You can ex expect a lot of steamy scenes between the characters, but political intrigue, romance, uh, and indeed a trip through time of the gay rights movement. Eve. Okay, well, Dipti, thank you so much. Great choice uh, this week. We're going to leave you to decide what to think of the series. Um, here's a preview of Fellow Travellers out on Showtime later this month. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Beware of these communists and queers. These people are dangerous to this country. I look out at that city and think about what it denies us. We lie about who we sleep with. Not who we sleep with. It's who we love. Have you ever been in love with another male? I have loved you my whole life. My great, consuming love. Mr. Fuller, answer the question.